Okay, so as I talked about, there's this kind of pyramid of the way we read price action, and it starts with impulsive versus corrective moves. As I've mentioned before, we're trying to read price action context structurally or contextually. And so the context is what kind of gives you an understanding of what the overall environment is. And so by learning to read the context, you're learning to kind of see the underlying order flow in the environment. We have a total of three filters that we use to establish the price action context. And the base of that is this impulsive and corrective moves. Now to start off with, impulsive moves have very defined characteristics that you're going to be able to want to learn how to spot so that they're completely automatic and subconscious so you don't even have to think about them. The first of these characteristics is that impulsive moves tend to have larger candles. Now from your study of candlesticks and how they represent the buying and selling for that particular candle, if you think about it, if there is a very large candle, either bullish or bearish, then that means there was a lot of order flow either on the buy or the sell side to create that particular candle for that particular time. So let's just say these are daily candles for that particular day. This was a large amount of buying. You know, based on the construction of candlesticks that if it was a bullish candle, the bottom right here, part of it is the open. This wick represents the low. So the market opened, only went down a little bit, but then it climbed up for the entire duration of the candle. And since there's no wick above it, that means that it closed on the top of the candle. This is important to understand from an order flow perspective because it tells you that there was immense amount of buying interest for the entire duration of this candle to the point where it didn't drop that much, it climbed for most of the day, and it closed on the highs. Impulsive moves tend to have larger candles, either bullish or bearish, because it intimates a large participation on the buyer or the sell side of the market. So the first characteristics of an impulsive move is large candles because that indicates large participation on one side of the market or the other. The second characteristic of an impulsive move is that the majority of candles are of the same color. So they're either generally for the most part bullish or for the most part bearish. Now we're starting to integrate a sense of time into this further beyond one candle because we're saying, hey, for lots of candles, this was all bullish, or other than this candle right here, it was bullish, bullish, bearish, and then bullish. The presence of the market being bullish for a long period of time indicates that that buying pressure was present, not just over one candle, but several. So we're using this as a second characteristic to kind of identify strong order flow and thus impulsive moves. The third characteristic of impulsive moves is that the closes of these candles tend to be towards the direction of the move. So if they're bullish, they tend to be towards the top, and if they're bearish, they tend to be towards at the bottom. Why is this an important characteristic to define uh, the price action order flow in an impulsive move? So <clears throat> the close of the candle indicates, basically, if you think about it, if this is a daily candle, then it tells you that the market really didn't push back from the highs of the day. So basically the market opened, went a little bit down, found buying pressure, reached a little bit high here, and then closed near the highs. Closing near the highs on a bullish candle or closing near those on a bearish candle indicates that the buying pressure really didn't let up a whole lot going into the close of that particular candle. So it's super important that you're able to see why this both individually and then all three of these characteristics collectively indicate a strong presence of buying or selling pressure. There is a fourth characteristic of impulsive moves, but we talk about that in our price action course. So these are the three that you'll need and wanna work with for now. Now to kind of further this description of an impulsive move, uh, we're looking at a bearish impulsive move here. If you notice, most of the candles are of one color. They're closing towards the lows, and they're big candles, so it suggests a strong and directional impulsive move. And the way to think about this in terms of order flow is that the sellers are in control. There's more sellers than there are buyers. 
When we look at it in a chart, here we have a strong bullish impulsive move. So let's look at this. We have a strong candle here, very big candle, a few small candles, but look at the majority of the color of the candles. They're all bullish. They're all one color with only a few bearish counter trend candles. That tells me that for these, this is a four hour chart here. So for each one of these candles represents four hours of price action. If you look at this, this is a few days worth of price action. It's about two, two and a half days worth of price action that we could only manifest a couple bearish candles. So that tells me that during these two days, the majority of order flow was bullish because it was constantly closing bullish and it just kept moving in one direction. So we can see the presence of an impulsive move here. All the bars are in one direction, they're generating large and they close towards the highs. So they tell us, if you think about this, an impulsive move communicates to us who's in control, if a trend is more likely to continue or if there's a potential breakout coming. Corrective moves are really easy to understand because they're just the inverse of the opposite of an impulsive move. So instead of the candles being large, they're smaller in nature. Instead of the candles closing towards the highs or lows, there's closes towards the middle. Instead of there being constantly one color type of candle, bullish or bearish, there's a mix. So just think of corrective moves as the inverse of an impulsive move, not just from a visual standpoint, but what they communicate from an order flow perspective. Corrective moves, as we can see, is a big mix between buy or bullish and bearish candles. It represents a kind of an equilibrium between the buyers and sellers. And these tend to create much more sideways directional moves. So they're not bullish, they're not bearish. There's kind of an equal balance between the buyers and sellers and thus a direction, a one direction is less likely to manifest. When we look at it in the chart, this is the same chart. So here's the bullish impulsive move, but look what happens. We go into a corrective phase with a mix of bullish and bearish candles, closes towards the middles and smaller candles. So this is kind of like a textbook impulsive and corrective pattern manifesting itself here. So you can see this kind of meets all the definitions of a corrective move. Now, before we move on, it's important to understand that impulsive and corrective moves tend to kind of operate in a pattern. 75% of the time, an impulsive move is going to be followed by a corrective move, which is then going to be followed by an impulsive move, which continues in the same direction as the original impulsive move. So it's less likely that you're going to see a bullish impulsive move followed by a counter trend bearish impulsive move. Much more likely is a bullish impulsive move going to be followed by a corrective move. And it tends to create this series until they run into a counter trend force, which is stronger than that particular trending force. So buyers will remain in control until they run into a greater presence of sellers than there are buyers. It's important to understand this and important to understand how impulsive and corrective moves tend to work together to create kind of a series so that you can understand, hey, until this kind of pattern and chain is disrupted, we should expect the pattern to continue the majority.